think I'm recording. Anyway. Never know how to start these videos. Uh, I like to say OCN and YouTubers, but I personally think that's dumb, so I'm going to try to get away from doing that. Uh, normally you see some live action thing going on behind me. That's not the case today. Uh, really busy. Started a new job for pastoring. Uh, I love it. Uh, totally rewarding job, So, but it takes a lot of my time. So that's why I've been promising for about two months to do the heat shrinkless guide, uh, and it's taken me this long to actually get to it. Uh, today we're just going to go over the MDPC or plastic type heat shrinkless guide. I'll be showing you guys the method, exactly how to do it, down to the small bond and the small details. I'll be going through it, typical Lutro custom style. And if you guys have any questions, I'll make sure to you know, answer them the best I can on YouTube. OCN, I tend to answer them a little bit faster because I'm always going through the forms there. But I'm not gonna. I'm gonna stop blabbering now, and we're gonna hit the guide, and we're gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. And here we go. Man, that's stupid sounding. So here we have the tools and the supplies that you will need for heat shrinkless sleeving. It does not involve too entirely much. Uh, we got your sleeve, which I hope that you have. We got a big lighter. You can use any lighter you want, but most people that have been following my work know that I absolutely love the big lighters. A, they're cheap. B, you can find them anywhere. And C, they're disposable. So you can, you know, kill a couple trees while you're at it and create some more garbage. Uh, I have three to one heat shrink, and they do not need to be cut in good pieces. These are just random different sizes. Uh, it really does not matter. Uh, three to one with a thick wall is preferred uh, or something that has a little bit more tolerance to heat. Uh, and I'll bring that up here in a little bit. You got your Euro tool clippers that I have in my tool guide. And then you have a pre-crimped wire that is ready to go, has two crimps on both sides. This is actually a uh, extension wire that I made myself. And that's it. I mean, it doesn't take a whole, you know, huge load of expensive stuff to do heat shrinkless. Uh, you don't even need, sadly, the Lutro Customs tool. It is not needed for this, and it has no point in being needed for this, which is sad. But that's okay. So we're just going to start out. We're going to move our lighter over, move our bick over, or our cutter. <laughs> So I've shown you guys a couple times before how I measure out sleeve. It's really, really simple. Each sleeve has a different spot on the wire where it can be measured at. Let's say I was doing cobra sleeving. Well, cobra sleeving has a smaller diameter. So for cobra sleeving, I have to make it a little bit longer because once I put it over the wire, it's going to expand and cause the sleeving to be shorter. So I go from the very tip all the way to the other very tip. Again, that depends on the sleeving and the gauge sizes. MDP, MDPC sleeving is a little bit thicker in diameter. So, what I'll do is my spot where I'm going to want this, let's see if I can get this up here, and actually I will even grab my depinning tool to show you. I want the sleeve to go right there in the middle. There, see if I can get it here. Oh, my camera right there in the middle. And then the same thing for the other side. I want it to go right in the middle of, right there, right in the middle of this pin. So that's where I want the sleeve to end up stretched. So to do that, I will take the sleeving, I will measure it up to the first crimp there. Let's see if I can get it on there. And the first crimp well, that's not really a crimp. i got to use proper vernacular here. It is the first little pointy things that point up <laughs> on the prongs. So you hold it up to there. And then what I'll do without stretching the sleeve, you just saw me do it, I hold it down to the other end. See, you'll see where the wire is actually crimped right there, and it's the first spot where the wire goes away and goes into the crimp. I will hold my finger there. I will let the wire drop off, and that is where I'll cut it. Of course, I'll take my straight edge, and I'll cut it straight. And then there we have our sleeve. 
of course, with any sleeving job, we're going to want to hit it up with the lighter. And I will show you guys how I do this if I can get close enough. I am just barely melting a little bit of it. And I'm going to taper it off a little bit. This is just like all my other guides, so this is no different. Hit it up with a little fire. Scarecrow. And go ahead and taper it off. What that does is it allows me to put this on the wire without it fraying everywhere. And basically, every sleeve that you work with, you'll do that with. With, with, with. Alright, so we're going to put it on the wire, which is rather simple. And the reason I'm using black with white sleeving, technically I would always want to use white wire, which you got right here. Always want to use white wire uh, with white sleeving. However, for this demonstration, I really wanted you guys to be able to see it, so I wanted a better contrast. Uh, and honestly, you can use black wire with white sleeving if you want, really wanted to, as long as all of your wires um, are black, because then it'll match. Otherwise, it looks kind of weird, and you got different colored sleevings and whatnot. So, let's see if we can get this to focus on this again. As you can see, come on. Oh, I'm on camera. Oh, I'm going to have to do this manually. And I... There we go. You can see I put that sleeve exactly where I wanted it. My camera is skitzing out here a little bit on this. So you can see it's above. Jeez, come on. You can see that it's above the first crimp, but in between the first two prongs that are popping up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch it down, stretch the sleeve rather well. you'll hear it pop on the other side and this I'm just doing this to make sure the sleeve ends and begins exactly where I want it to and as you will see it's the same thing on this side there we go that's a better shot it's in the same spot so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll start on this side so let me show you this one more time let me stand up here so I can actually give you guys a really good shot of it. This is the crimp. Come on, camera. Actually, you know what? Let me see if I can take off the autofocus here. There we go. So you see the first crimp here. Obviously, this is a wire I did myself, so I'm, I'm pretty... Uh, specific about how my crimps look. At least I try my best. So, oh, let's get it focused in there. So you'll see this first crimp where the wire is actually being held into the crimp uh, by the insulation. I want this sleeve to be above that. So the sleeve is going to be, see if I can get it right there. The sleeve is going to be right there. It can't be above here, or any of the sleeving can't slide up onto this area. If any of it gets on this area, or above these two prongs in here, geez, I keep floating down here, above these two prongs here, then it will not snap in. Uh, the two, come on now, the two little prongs on the side here, will not let it to be snapped in and the little extra pressure on the back of these pins will not let it stay. Uh, it, you might be able to jam it in but it won't actually stay in there. So let's go over this again. I need some leeway here to do it. We're going to take it and we're going to put the wire right above. Let's see if I have enough slack here to get it in there. No, I don't. The wire is perfectly spaced so Hopefully you can see where that wire is now. It's above that first crimp and below the space there. Now let me show you where it is on the other normal pins that most of you guys are going to be looking at so you understand. Uh, this crimp is the same one, except that one was a male and this is a female pin, uh, obviously, because it is the one it goes into. I'm not going to explain that. You guys can figure that out on your own. I'm not here to explain the birds and the bees. So. We're going to put the sleeve right above, just like last time. 
course, I need to actually push it down so I can get a, there we go, just like that. Okay, what we're going to do, take our heat shrink, and I'm putting it right over, and right there. So I have the heat shrink and right up to where I need it to melt. So I got to sit down and do this. So I'm going to try to do my best here to show you. It needs to be a little bit away from the camera. So I'm going to see if my autofocus is going to want to work for me. Oh, and it's not. Surprise. Let me see if I can get this into focus. There we go. So what I'm going to do is get my flame going. I'm going to use the blue part of it. You guys can see it melting, and then you'll see the actual sleeving inside of it begin to bubble a little bit. Once you see that, we just take our fingers and lightly press. You don't have to go psycho and, you know, press in a bunch of different spots. Or, like, gum your fingers all over it. Once you've done that and straighten it down, you take your cutter, go up one side of the heat shrink, just like that, snip down, and then you just peel it off. So, what you're going to be left with is a perfect tack. What is a tack you say? Uh, that's a tack right there. Basically what we've done is we've melted the sleeve down into the middle of the connector or in, the, in between the first crimp and the first little prongy things that are up there. What that does is allows, we gotta bring this back down here, that allows it to be a stiff, strong bond. Now, that's never gonna pull out. That, that crimp right there is gonna rip out of there before that sleeve is gonna move anywhere. It needs to be in that spot. If you can melt it onto the wire, but then you're gonna see a little bit of melting and uh, you'll see it curve inward a little bit right into the connector. And you don't want that. You want to have a smooth flowing uh, wire coming out of here. So at this point in time, you should have the basics down. And I'm going to walk you through one more, one more time on the other side. Uh, and then we're just going to pop this into a 24 pin I have waiting for it. Uh, of course, again, I'm not going to use it because it's black wire. But I just want to show you guys what a full 24 pin will look like. Uh, but I'll go through all this really shortly one more time, so that in case you guys missed it, you don't have to rewind, you can just watch again. But I want to show you what it's going to look like on the other side. So, we are going to stretch the sleeve down. This is creating a really good hold on our wire. At the same time, it's allowing us to be able to shape this later so again see if I can get this really close up there like last time they got the autofocus okay there we go so again I have the sleeving in between the two but it's over the first crimp because that's what it holds on to I'm going to take a piece of heat shrink I'm going to put it right over it now you'll see, I can still see a little bit of the sleeving, but the heat shrink is right up to it. I don't shrink the whole heat shrink, just a little bit, right in the front. I'm using the blue part of the flame. And you're going to see it. Oh, dang. See, I don't want to burn my camera, and I'm trying to show you guys the best I can here. Let me see who makes mistakes all the time. And I almost just lighted up my camera. But you can still see it. It's still in the middle. And then just take your fingers. You might get a little bit on your fingers, but it's okay. It shouldn't be that hot. You know, you don't want to sit there and grab onto it, but just slightly go around. Don't roll it or anything like that. And it's going to cool down, and you'll feel it cool down, but don't let it cool down all the way because you want to bring in your snips here. And then you just peel it off. Now, if your heat shrink gets too cold, it will hold, hold, hold onto it. It'll become stiff. So if that happens, just hit it up with a little bit more flame and cut it off. 
So let me show this to you again. Turn on my turn off my autofocus. Now you'll see a pretty good weld on there. If you melt this top part up here, you know, I was actually pointing at it with my mouse, knowing darn well that you guys can't see it. And no, I don't want to talk to you. That was my Skype buddies. That was a sweet interruption. I should turn that off. Anyway, you'll see a pretty good tack on here. And if that burns a little bit, you're absolutely fine. If you have any burning up here in this area, you're going to want to redo it. So this is our wire. Now, you can't see anything because it's not on autofocus. This wire will hold up on its own. Now, the tighter you get it, the more it's going to be able to stay up on its own. Redo this so that you can form it and it'll train the wire and it'll stay in that way. It also does a coverage on the wire. And this is for any kind of uh, you know plastic type sleeving. And that's why we stretched it. That's why we tacked it where we did. And that's why we measured it the way we did. That is a perfect sign of quality when you're sleeving. And that is how you end up with work like this. Now you can see that these are bowed out a little bit right here. Uh, that is because I have not trained this one 100% quite yet. But I'm actually going to pop this in really quick so I can show you what it's going to look like. And you'll see the difference between white and black. Now, I want to go over something really quick. If this does not latch into your connector here, then what you do is you take your snips and over the couple of spots that I showed you, let me pop this back out here really quick because this is really important because I don't want to have you guys redo a wire if you really don't have to and you can just fix it. And I got mail, so let's grab this out of here. There we go. Let me see. Of course it's not going to work. Okay. On this pin, if you get any actual sleeve melting on this part of it right here, this bottom part, which I can actually swip, swipe it around and show you, this back part of the pin right here, then it will not snip in if you get any... Whoa, come on now. Everything's reversed. There we go. If you get any on this area right here, it will not snip in. It has to be down here. Now, if you get a huge amount of it right here, what you'll have to do is you'll take your snips and you will trim a little bit of it off, little bits at a time. You don't want to go too crazy with that because you're going to lose your bond after a while. And if that's the case and you do end up losing your bond and it starts moving on you, then you just simply grab another piece and re-shrink it. Now, that's only gonna work so often, so you're gonna wanna really try to get it down the first time so you don't have to go through that. Um, but as you guys saw, it's really simple. It's all down to the technique and how you guys do it. You're gonna run into problems, and, and honestly, it's just stuff that I really can't teach you. You're gonna have to run into it yourself. You'll be able to eyeball when it's gonna be a, a good melt and when it's a bad melt. You'll also notice that when you're inserting it, if you didn't melt this all the way, then what will happen is you'll have a couple strands pop out and you'll see it push up a little bit. If you see that, immediately stop. Don't try to shove it in. Pull it back out. Grab your heat shrink and remelt it up a little bit. Make sure that it's tapered in. Uh, again, that's all by feel and that's something that you're really just going to have to learn as you go through because... You know, I could go over every little detail on this, uh, and most of you guys can attest that I've already done sleeping. You're not going to learn it until you actually sit down and try messing with it yourself. Uh, so let me straighten this out. And I'll go over how to make extensions one day. You guys are all like, yeah, we've heard that before. No, seriously, I'll do it. i got a bunch of really fun and interesting projects coming up, but we'll do paracord right after this one. So... You guys can see that that's what a heat shrinkless is going to look like. Now, let me see. We'll do this side here. I haven't trained this one all the way, so it's not perfectly straight on me. 
Here we go. Let's see if I can get the camera to not autofocus. Now you can see right here, a little pointer here. You can see that it goes all the way down and it goes into the connector. It doesn't taper, it doesn't look melted right here, uh, but it goes all the way in and looks like it comes seamlessly seamlessly out. Now uh, that is the biggest flaw I see in most people that do heat shrinkless. They'll melt the absolute crud out of this and then you can actually see some of the melting right here and it'll actually taper in when it should just go straight in. There should be no tapering. You should see nothing melted here. It should look just like the sleeve is going inside the connector with nothing going on. Now you can clearly see the difference here between the black and the white wiring and that is why we always want to use white wire when it comes to white sleeving. So I hope that that was informative for you guys and you guys learned something. Uh, you know, I've probably said this about a billion times, but I really want you guys to understand that it comes down to feel. Don't get frustrated. Uh, don't get mad when you're doing it. It's just like sleeving anything else. Uh, it, it takes time. It takes patience. It takes the right tools, uh, and it takes the knowledge. And you guys heard me preach that from the sleeving pulpit. Uh, many times uh, you guys if you guys are willing to take the time and put yourself through 25 minutes of watching me babble on about doing these videos and listening to my boring droning voice uh, explaining this then you guys are smart enough and you have the patience to go ahead and tackle this so work with it take your time with it and you guys will do an awesome job I completely believe that uh, and you know what, we're just going to end the video right here instead of you guys having to look at my ugly mug again. You know, if you guys have any questions or anything else to that related matter, uh, f please feel free to contact me on OCN. That's going to be the best way that you can get a hold of me. You can send me a message on YouTube. Uh, you may or may not get a reply for a couple days just because I'm busy. Um, and I have the Paracord video coming up next. Uh, I also have some exciting things. Uh, where I'm going to be taking a bunch of crimp tools. Uh, we're going to find out which one does the best, and I'm going to teach you guys how to crimp on top of that. I also have a ton of ATX tools like this um, on how to de-pin. I'm going to go over how to do the hard ones, and I'm going to go over which tools are actually worth the money. Um, and then I'm going to prove it by showing you how well they work or how well they don't work. So there's a lot of exciting things coming up for the guys in Lutro Customs. Uh, as always, uh, you know, the shop or company or whatever you want to call it is uh, it's solely here to teach you guys how to sleeve. Uh, you know, we have new things like bracelets and all sorts of things. And all that is is to help fund uh, these videos and these projects. I, I look forward to doing more of them in between my mods. Uh, and I'm really appreciative because Lutro Customs is what you guys made it today. Uh, if it wasn't for you guys, and oh my gosh, I, was, I have reminders on my calendar. If it wasn't for you guys uh, putting forth the comments and asking me questions, then this would have gone nowhere. Uh, so thank you from the bottom of my heart for making this how awesome it really is. Uh, go ahead and shoot me questions if you have them, and that's it. Thanks, guys.